MMA on the way this week. Another card this weekend, UFC 127. And Kevin Ioli, our lead MMA writer on Yahoo, joins us for a little breakdown of some of the undercard fights. Let's talk a little George Stavis, a guy who's a uh, high riser. I know you talked to him. You wrote a column on him. And looks like he's on the edge before this uh, Seaver fight, if he wins, of potentially getting a title shot. Yeah, uh, Dana White said uh, that, in fact, if George does win, he will get a title shot. The question is, when is that going to be? Uh, we already know that at UFC 130 in May is going to be the trilogy, uh, the third fight between Gray Maynard and Frankie Edgar, the second for the lightweight belt. They're going to go at it in a rematch uh, after their draw at UFC 125. Then, after that, some point after that, uh, Anthony Pettis, the former WEC champion, assuming he beats Clay Guida, is going to get a shot. So let's say for the, uh, the sake of argument, in fact, Pettis does uh, beat Clay Guida when they fight. Uh, they're fighting, I believe, it's UFC 129. I start to get these numbers all mixed up, but uh, Guida and Pettis are, uh, have a fight upcoming. Once that happens, Steve, then and only then will Sotiropoulos get a shot. Um, but the great thing about George is, you know, he's, he understands, he said, you know what, I'm trying to improve, I'm trying to get better as a fighter, I'm going to keep fighting, and I'm not worried at all about the title shot. I give credit to these lightweights, and Pettis is included, because uh, they could cry and moan and sit around and, you know, wait six, eight months, but they're all going in there and they're risking it. I think that's the way to go because, you know, look what happened to Rashad Evans in the light heavyweight belt. He chose to wait as opposed to taking fights that he could have taken in the interim. He cost himself money, not both salary that he would have made, and then on top of that, Steve, uh, you know, sponsorship money he would have made. You know, kind of you lose your edge a little bit when you're off for a long time, and now he gets hurt, you know, a very short period of time before his fight, and he's out and with his buddy fighting and potentially winning the uh, the light heavyweight title. You know, he, he's completely out of the picture. So, you know, I, I think the guys are better to fight because if you fight, you know, good things happen. You know, if you're a quality fighter and you and you do well, good things are going to happen to you. So I, I think the fighters are better off fighting. Uh, everybody has to make their own personal decision, but I just think it's the right thing to do. So if Pettis and Sotiropoulos are the next guys after uh, Maynard and the champ, Edgar, who do you think is better? Who's better, Pettis or Sotiropoulos? I, I, in my opinion, George Sotiropoulos without question. Um, you know, Pettis has got a lot of hype behind him because of the kick. Um, but, you know, if you would ask the fans, ask the media prior to that kick, stop the fight 10 seconds before that kick happened, who should get a uh, shot at the title? Should it be George Sotiropoulos or Anthony Pettis? I think everybody it would have said George Sotiropoulos. The guy's won seven in a row. If he beats Dennis Seaver, it's eight in a row in the UFC. His winning streak is eight, including fights outside the UFC, which he could extend to nine. Um, the last three fights, you know, he stepped up the competition level with dominated Joe Daddy Stevenson, we know, is a, a former title challenger, very good fighter, dominated uh, Kurt Pellegrino, also uh, submitted uh, Joe Lozon. Uh, I think he's been in some really good scraps, you know, entertaining fights. I think he has a terrific resume. Uh, this is to take nothing from Showtime, you know, who I think is a is a fun fighter and entertaining guy, but I think, you know, he, there's a lot more question about him and his ability to compete at that highest level. I'm not saying he can't, but I think George has proven himself uh, much better than, uh, than Showtime has at this point. I also give Sotiropoulos credit for taking this particular fight because it's not an easy fight. He wanted to turn around quickly and fight in his homeland of Australia. And Dennis Seaver, probably not that good on the ground. But if it stays on the feet, he's a nasty fighter on the feet. Yeah, to me, this is a no-win situation for Sotiropoulos because if you if you destroy Dennis Seaver, people are going to say, oh, so what? Dennis Seaver is you know, not that big a deal. But, you know, Seaver's a good kickboxer. His strength is where Sotiropoulos' you know, potentially weakness is. I know George fought a little bit as a pro boxer, but you know, he's really a jiu-jitsu guy, and, and he's added the other things to his game. Um, so, you know, if, you know, if George happens to lose, don't look good, you know, he's, he's got much more of a risk on his back than Dennis Seaver, and it's, it's a bad style matchup. Well, one thing for sure, it is a fight of the night candidate. Any fight George Sotiropoulos is in, I, I've come to uh, realize it could be. I mean, you know, uh, Dana White, I was asking him about Sotiropoulos the other day, and he referred to it as, a, you know, he's a guy that gets in jujitsu wars. And I hadn't really thought of phrasing it that way, but that's really a good, you know, way to put it. And I agree with that. You know, he's been in some of these fights on the ground where they've been really outstanding. All right, Kev, good job. Thank you, Steve.